Right, okay, me. Uh, decided to do some maintenance on the generator. So, uh, first thing we're going to start with is going to be having a quick look over the engine, the inside, so we can see any leaking. Um, I turn the generator around. I've disconnected this big um, flexi pipe, and I can see a solid exhaust with a grime on it. As you can see inside there, a bit black, with carbon. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to run through now. No, I can't focus. We'll take off that. There's the high voltage uh, sparking. And if I can ever find my banner, and uh, if I can do this 100. No, don't think I can. I'll just put the camera down for one second. Okay, so that was a little tricky to do. Uh, 100, so I just put the camera. So I've undone it. I'm just going to undo it and check the general condition of the spark plug. Did it ever want to come out? Oops. And there we are. Let's take a look at that. How's that look to you? So, not too bad. Still fairly clean. Can't see any huge carbon bits. How's that look for you? Okay for me. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll, uh, not happy with that. So we'll put that back in. Oops. Try not to crop thread it. Yeah, it will go in a lot faster when it comes out. I should be able to tighten it up 100 anyway. Right. right. Get my ratchet off there. Yeah. Right, the second thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to wrap that, that, put everything back where you found it so then we don't get lost. The next thing I'm going to check is going to be, uh, not the tyres anyway, just the general condition now, see anything loose. Um, this gasket here, can't really see that on the camera, but yeah, there's no gasket, looks tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the air filter now. Looks like we have a brown hell of a bit of ink So, uh, yeah, another screwdriver. Pop the lid off. I like that. Any oil residue? No, a little bit. A little bit of oil residue there. Oops. Get focused. And then down the side, you may even know if you can see that. Take that out. And that is our oil. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean air filter, air filter's got a little bit of oil in. Uh, not, not too bad, I mean you're meant to have a little bit of oil. You just squeeze that out. I'm happy with that. Uh, if it looks okay, pop that back in. Like that. And then somehow I'll try and get that clip back on. Bear with me, so I'm trying to do the clip at the same time as filming. I think I've got it. Nope, I haven't. Nope, mother, thank you. I forget on you. Yeah, bear with me, I'll be one second. Ah, there we are. That's one. I'll sort the other one out later. I'm trying to film this shit, you know. So, uh, the Novi 8, yep. Yeah. Fuel lines, okay. I don't really need to check the fuel, um, fuel filter. This is only a week old, this generator. I'm going to do a pre check maintenance of it though. It doesn't look too okay from that side. Uh, that's being welded on. The weld is leaking, but we've got our air conditioning to take care of that. And the extractors. There's the piece of welds on. That's 3 inch. And same as that one, 3 inch. But I'll still smoke it behind me. Right. Right. So, after all these uh, pre maintenance checks, uh, basically put that back over there. 
I'm gonna clamp that up in a minute. I need to actually clamp that up. That's the pipe, three inch pipe. Um I'm install the diode here. Uh I need to see thin tape, I've written tape, but I'll toss pitch on the end. Uh it's a little diode, basically. It means that the shed cannot draw off this battery. So that means if I ever drain the batteries down in the uh any other sheds, then it will not drain uh generate the battery so that means if I always start the generator because it is an electric start generator three phase requires low balancing um, not really possible on a single phase home so uh, one phase is constantly overloaded not going to do about that uh, so. um, I do not think if the uh, engine's got enough air so as you can see and um, holes for our new ventilation systems that are going to be going in, which is six inch extractors, three of them, 245 cubic meters of oxygen per hour. Uh, this is about 735 cubic meters per hour, um, which works out as something like it replaces the oxygen in this room every uh, three three minutes, I think it was. I can't remember exactly. Three, maybe less, maybe one and a half. I can't remember the top of my head. Yeah, uh, and you know it's okay, I've just checked that. It kind of leaked everywhere, so I'm not going to undo that again. Start and motor looks okay. Uh, like these are just temporary wires that I've got everywhere. They're temporary, as I said, I've got the diode put in. Diodes in, these are just temporary cables. Um, circuit breaker. So before, it's a three phase. That I fixed in. T four hundred volt, yeah. Uh, then we got our single phase receptacles, twelve hundred watts max, as it says on them, which is not very good if you want to boil a kettle. It's useless. So that's why it's three phase, three phase fucking kettle. <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, so I've welded on before. Battery, turn up seven amp power battery. Is inside the engine. Uh, fuel gauge. Yeah, just over the halfway full. Just a little over halfway. Oops. The bend. Anyway, this one, yeah. There's our generator. It then plugs into the central no, plug there, which then I've wired into uh, one of the phases on this. It's on L3, I put the shed on L3. Um, so there, the generator. As I said before, we do have lights in here. Uh, we did have a 6 inch ventilation fan, as you can see by this one. That's the ductwork that goes outside. Uh, as I said, 6 inch. Uh, runs up. I used to have one extractor fan there. I've now put that one there and the hole in there. And then this hole here, I'll have another one, which will be four. This one will suck in fresh oxygen and that will go down to the, the chamber down the side there um, to put oxygen into the engine. Because I think the engine is stalling and uh, it won't take heavy loads and I think it's under uh, not enough air. So we'll compensate by that by putting. So fresh oxygen straight into the um, the air intake filter, so I'll just put the duct straight over the air intake filter and that'll pump in fresh oxygen, uh, which will hopefully give the engine uh, nice and clean, fresh oxygen, you know what I mean? So coming through that hole there, um, these ones are all extract, so even though this generator has a big pipe, uh, it still leaks from where the wells are. The wells do leak, I didn't weld it. Uh, garage welded it for me so uh, they, they, they're responsible for that it is leaking and I can't be asked to take me back anyway to get it done so I welded a bit myself I've, I've stopped it leaking I've still got 90% of the leak but when you've got under full load the generator and you put 3.5 kW through it uh, you know there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of any holes you know it's just going to pour out so uh, these ventilation will take care of any leaking um, also, temperature is a big factor in here. This thing kicks off a lot of temperature. Um, 
I was reading the generator before. I think it was one of these. I don't know if you can see them properly. Don't know if you can, but uh, where was I? It said something like "Do not operate in uh, over 35 degrees centigrade." Well, I measured with my little temperature gauge that goes through the wall into the uh, test meters. Uh, I measured uh, 37 degrees, which could be causing the motor to actually overheat. The motor could be overheating the windings, and then that causes the thermistor in the motor to cut out or increase resistance and that's making the engine stall which means it works harder. Uh, it's either one of these two things but I, I, it's all down to heat and lack of oxygen. Uh, I know the fuel fresh so it's good fuel. It's a petrol generator as I said 3.5 kW uh, continuous. Um, electric star three phase. Um, not made for indoors, made for outdoors but I converted it for indoors. Uh, I don't sleep or anything in this room, so I'm not really bothered about fumes. So, uh, new extractors in there. We've already got a little six foot fluorescent, or is it five, five foot, maybe six foot, I think it's five foot. Uh, so where we've got our holes in the ceiling. As you can see, if we look in the ceiling, that I put in um, some insulation, and you can see it there, and you can see it there as well. This is to compensate the sound, so it's like acoustic installation. Insta ins insulation, I've got insulation on the brain. So, uh, there's our new hole for six inch, yeah. So, I'm not boring anyone here. But, yeah, going to the main turn. You can see there's a gap down there. Cooling. So, yeah, I think the engine is overheating. And then it comes out and goes out through the door. Uh, as you can see, if I shut this door, see the gap there, so that, that lets up sound. So we need to seal that up with a bit of weather seal. And yeah, so we've got that going to the wall. This is the soil floor. Uh, I'm going to put some pea shingle down, which is like pebble, pebbly rock. Um, just basically to look, so it looks a bit better, so I'm not walking in soil all the time in the house. So, uh, this is, I know I haven't done really an in-depth video on the generator, but this is sort of an in-depth one. Um, let me read that. So it says, balance it across all three outlets. So it's evenly balanced, will cause permanent damage. Yeah, and I'd say that as well, if it wants to keep the warranty intact. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, battery charging, yeah, it's got a 10 amp battery charger, as I said before. Not really, it's actually only about 5 or 6 amp. 3.5 kW. Put it on the 3.5 kW when it's warm, it will store. People always say you need to warm the generator up before you put a high load on. If I do that with this, it's just tripped out straight away and installed. So, uh, I have to do it when it is fucking cold, which is a pain to ask because this generator was so expensive and I saved up so much money to get it and it's not my ideal generator. So, there we have it. Any questions? Don't forget, you know what to do.